Okay, in this video I, I do want to uh, do the bone setup. Uh, I got sidetracked last time with uh, adding those symbols for the toes, so uh, now I'll rig it. Uh, just as a reminder, I'm working with the Essentials workspace and I added um, this bone tool uh, just to the toolbar just because it's going to be useful. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to pop in here to the uh, to the figure from last time I had uh, I had hidden a couple of layers just to make it a little easier to select let's switch this over to fit in window and that's going to be important because I'm going to now use the bone tool and the way it works with symbols is you connect um, you can only connect it to one part of a symbol okay so get in nice and close when you're doing this now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the whole armature around the hips, kind of like we did when we did layer parenting as well. And part of this is just because the hips are kind of central to locomotion. Uh, if you think, if you ever played soccer, you were probably taught to watch um, the player's hips that you were defending against, um, just because they always tell you which way uh, the person's going to move. Um, but in any case, it, this is just kind of a central point to the um, character, so we'll build out from here. So notice I have the bone tool. I'm going to just start with uh, the hip, and when I do that and drag out, notice that um, as, I'm, as I'm holding this down, um, I can move over and I can't select an area that's inside just that hip. But as soon as I overlap another symbol, even though the hip might be in front, um, then it becomes available to me. If I let go, notice it's now connected to the leg symbol here, or the left thigh, to be precise. I'm going to click and drag down. Notice how the icon here says it's not going to be able to connect because there's no other symbol. But the minute I get over the lower part of the left leg, that becomes available. So I'm just kind of looking for where the knee would be. And that connects that symbol. I'm going to click and drag down to the ankle here. And there we go. Here's the ankle. And then I'm going to um, come down over to where the toes are. And again, for you doing this, you don't need to worry about making a toe joint. That's, that's okay. So that's one. Now I'm going to come back up to where that hip joint is. And I'm going to go back over to the right thigh. So starting up here again, I can start and just come down. There's the right thigh. Right lower leg. Right ankle. And the right toes. All right, so we got those. Let me pop out here. Um, now as I'm doing this, notice what's happened. We have a bunch of empty layers now. So let me zoom in here. We have all those layers that had um, my, my lower um, symbols are all empty now. They don't have dots on the layer. So, and I have a new thing called Armature 1. So whenever you're working with bones, they all go to one layer called an armature. It's kind of a special kind of layer. and I just want to come up here and let's just delete these, make it a little easier to, to deal with. All right, now let's show the top part, but I'm going to still hold off on the, the right arm. Um, let's do the torso, and left hand. Okay, good. And let's come back up here. Let me uh, scale this up again. All right, so now I'm going to come over where the bones are, and if if uh, they go away kind of like they did here, you can um, just hold down Control or Command if you're on the Mac, and click back on any of them, and you'll see the the armature. All right, so I'm going to come back up from the hip, and up, oh, and you can see what happened here. It accidentally selected the torso, so it's not wanting to go. So I need to zoom in just a little bit closer and make sure that, um, that, that 
I have just the hip joint selected. So let's give it one more shot. Up, oh, it's still wanting to do that. So if this happens to you, um, let me undo that. What I want to do here is I want to move this point so that it's no longer on that torso. And to do that, you use the free transform tool. So remember how we use the free transform tool to move pivot points? Same thing, um, the, the joints of the bones uh, kind of are where those pivot points are. So if I move that down with the free transform tool and then get out the bone tool, notice that it's moved that location. All right, so I'm gonna move up to where the torso is, right about here. And don't worry if you get a slight, slight slot, um, slide, sorry. Let's, uh, I can always reposition that too. We'll go up to the neck and over to the head. All right, and then from kind of this collarbone, I'm gonna come over to the left arm and come down to the elbow. Don't worry about these parts being kind of misaligned right now. I'm going to fix that. Let's go ahead and get all of these in. All right, there we go. I'm going to just zoom out, finish this up. Let's show the other parts of the body here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these layers. Here are the remaining parts. You can see we have very few pieces of the armature left. Control click. And why don't I just reposition where that collarbone is. There we go. And continue with these bones. So I'm going to just come over here to this side now and slide on down and then finally slide down to the wrists. All right, so we have it connected and if you're looking at this, you're thinking, geez, that left arm looks really strange. And it does because those those layer items kind of came in last. So first of all, let's go ahead and get rid of the rest of these layers here. So I just have them selected. So when you have this all set, you should have just one layer, armature one. You can rename it if you want. All right. Um, now what I'm gonna do is get out my free transform tool. And I'm just gonna click away so nothing's selected and select, I'm holding down shift, and selecting just all of the parts of that left arm. And I'm gonna right click, and just choose Arrange, Send to Back. When I do that, all those items go to the back of the armature. So we have that kind of set up. And if I zoom back here, if I get out my black arrow now, I can grab these different parts and you notice here's what bones do. Bones give you the ability to animate um, multiple shapes at once. Right? So it's kind of like a, a paper cutout doll. Um, I can grab these parts and drag them around. You can imagine that uh, it creates a pretty fast way of being able to set things up. Now before I finish, I'm going to just undo these. Um, I do encourage you when you're when you're fiddling around with bones, um, don't start the animation process quite yet. You want to just um, move items around and just make sure that their movements are okay. So like the right arm, the joints are moving pretty well here. I, uh, um, I'm happy with where that elbow joint ended up. Um, the, the wrist joint seems to be pretty good. Maybe I want to lower that just a little bit. So to lower it, I'm just going to get my free transform tool and move this point down just a little bit. And in fact, I can move down the whole shape. There we go. And now when I move it, now that bends kind of the way I want. So I would just go through and double check. And again, 
I'm not going to do tons of movement with the wrist here, but maybe I pull that, that pivot point back a little bit. So again, free transform, get that pivot point, move it back just a little bit. Try it again. It looks okay. Let's look at those knees because I tend to screw up the knees a lot on this. Yeah, you can see that that pivot point needs to come up because that knee's kind of coming forward. So free transform, let me uh, zoom in so you can see. So let's move this up just a bit. Come up and get our arrow and move it now. That knee looks better. I could clean up that um, that thigh too a little bit just by editing the thigh and, and cleaning away some of that blue. Um, kind of like we did with the, the toes before. While we're at it, let's look at those toes. So they're, they're wiggling okay. Again, I don't need tons of movement there. I just need a little bit of movement. That looks okay. Let's, uh, let's look at this knee. That knee looks pretty good too. Um, I might want these the back leg here to go further back. Um, see how it's coming in front of the hip here. So let's let's move that um, that back leg, that whole left leg back just a bit more. So I'm just selecting these shapes by holding down shift and clicking. And I'm going to choose a range. And this time I'm going to just choose send backward. I don't want to send it all the way to the back because I like those arm, that left arm being all the way back. But now when I do that, notice it's now gone behind the hip, which is good. All right. Let's just check that right knee again. I, I'm still kind of picky about that. Let me just fix that just a little bit. I just can't seem to be happy with this. Um, let me make one more adjustment. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so now I've rigged this character up. Um, don't worry about the shoulder here dropping down too much. That's okay. We're going to we're going to live with a little bit of that. The reason why bones are so cool is because it allows us to have this this little bit of um it, it's kind it's called uh reverse kinematics. Reverse kinematics allows you to um grab the end of a kinematic line. This arm would be one kinematic line and move it and everything adjusts out to it. So you can see posing this character becomes a lot easier. It's like posing a doll than when we've worked with um, layer parenting or even worse, just working with layers with pivot points. So you can imagine here how quickly the uh, walk cycle will be put together um, when we when we're able to adjust this so your job here at this point is just to kind of set this up make sure that it looks good and then last thing I'm going to do before I finish this movie I'm going to go back to scene one let's look in the library and here's our goon and I'm going to duplicate this because I like the way this is set up Remember, we're going to make a cycle, a walk cycle. So I want that goon, um, I, I want to keep just one set of the goon all kind of configured uh, without, having to, um, without having to break up the walk cycle if I want to use the goon for any other reason. So I'm going to just right click on this, choose duplicate, and here's the message. Goon copy, let's call it Goon Walk. All right, so here's Goon Walk. So it's a duplicate, duplicate of Goon. We have Goon Walk. Um, let me get out of this close up. 
And then we're back at scene one, right? So in properties here, I have that goon graphic selected. Last thing I'm gonna do here before I close this movie is I'm gonna swap that symbol with goon walk. Now right now, goon walk and goon are exactly the same. But next movie, I'm gonna configure the walk cycle. So I'll have one configured goon that doesn't have a walk cycle, which would be great if I need him to bend over and pick things up or do anything else. And then I'll have one of the goon just doing a cycle. So that's one thing that you should remember. Whenever you're doing an animation, even if you have a single character, it's okay to have multiple versions of that character for different purposes. So we'll get more into that next movie.